Hi, today we're carrying on looking at your stories in the Bible book of Nehemiah, which you started looking at last week. Nehemiah was written two and a half thousand years ago, and it describes true events where God's people who had been scattered among the nations from their home in the land of Israel, where God started to bring some of them back to live at their home in the land of Israel. And Nehemiah wrote his book so that we would believe and be convinced that God was really behind this work of bringing some of them back to their home of the land of Israel. And in particular, in today's story, as we're going to be hearing about their rebuilding of the city wall for their protection and care and security of the people, Nehemiah wants us to see that God was really behind that as well, that he was really behind this move of protection and care and concern for his people. So our story picks up in Nehemiah chapter 2 and by this point Nehemiah has come back to Israel with the blessing of the king and he's come to Jerusalem and he's assembled the leaders of God's people and told them about this vision that he has for rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. He says in 2.18, I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. So here we go. Here's a picture of God's people starting this wonderful work of building, rebuilding the city wall of Jerusalem, an act of love and care for each other to provide security and protection for all of them. But the question is, that's what they trust that God wants for God's people, but is it going to happen? Because almost as soon as they've started doing it, some opponents, people who don't want them to do it, arise. 2.19, when Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you're doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? So these people are saying that by building the city wall, Nehemiah and God's people are trying to shut the king out. They're kind of trying to declare independence and take over, which is, of course, not what they're doing. God has done it for their protection and because he cares about them. So God's people carry on with this work of building the city wall and they all get involved with it. And we're told in chapter three about how it proceeds. So here's a little diagram of Jerusalem and you can see, here we go, there's the city wall going around. And we're told that all different people from all different walks of life from God's people got involved in helping build the walls. So we're told the Sheep Gate up here was built by Elisha, the high priest, and his fellow priests. Uh, and then in 3 verse 3, the Fish Gate, here it is, was built by the sons of Hasana. Uh, and then we come to the Jeshana Gate, chapter 3 verse 6, told us was repaired by Joyda, the son of Pasida, and the Shalom, the son of Besidea. And the great thing is that it wasn't people who did building, who were just great at building, who did it. Most of God's people got involved, got involved and behind it, whatever they did. So we're told in chapter 3 verse 8, that Uzziel, who was normally a goldsmith, helped with the building. And Hananiah, who was a perfume maker, got involved. Uh, and in 3 verse 12, someone's daughters, someone called Shalom's daughters, even got involved with helping. So going on to these gates, here's the valley gate down here. The valley gate, we're told in chapter 3, verse 13, was rebuilt by Hanan and the residents of Zenoa. Uh, the rather uh, oddly named Dung Gate down here at the bottom, we're told in chapter 3, verse 14, was repaired by Malchijah, the son of Recap. Uh, and here, over on the other side, the fountain gate of Jerusalem was repaired by Shalon, the son of Col Hosea. So there we are, all of God's people got involved in this work of building this wall for their care and protection. But those who were trying to stop them hadn't finished there. So here we go. Here's the next picture of them. And let me tell you what happens next. So in chapter 4, um, verses um, uh, 3 to 6, we're told, uh, sorry, chapter 4, we're told, when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates in the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring stones back to life from these heaps of rubble burned as they are? And Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, what they're building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. So there they are, they're being laughed at and ridiculed. But they trusted that this is what God wanted for them and that God was really at work in them. So they prayed. They asked God to help them continue, for God to see the ways in which they were being mocked and ridiculed by their opponents. 
and, and God did help them. Um, so verse 6, by chapter 4, verse 6, they've rebuilt the wall to half of its height. But the thing is, the opposition to what they're doing got more and more intense. So we're told uh, in chapter 4, verse 7, when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repair to Jerusalem's wall had gone ahead and the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to stir up trouble against it. But Nehemiah and the pe- God's people made preparations to defend themselves. So... We're told in chapter 4, verse 13, Nehemiah said, Therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, shield, and bows. So here you go, here's a guy with a, with a spear, ready to defend. After I looked things over, I stood up and I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. So that is the big question of this story, isn't it? Would God's people succeed or would their enemies succeed? Well, the wonderful uh, conclusion of this story uh, in chapter 4, verse 15, when our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our work. God frustrated the plots, even the, the, the plots of the enemy, even this plan to take it by force. Uh, and in the end, we're told later on in the book of Nehemiah that they managed to complete the wall uh, as God uh, had wanted them to. So it's a wonderful story. It's an encouraging story. Why did people uh, in Nehemiah's day need to know this story? Well, God's people were going through quite a hard time at that point. They were ruled over by kings who didn't know their God and didn't always make it easy for them to follow him. They themselves were not perfect people, they were sinful people, and that got them bogged down, and they struggled with their sin. And also, as we've heard in today's story, there were enemies, there were opponents who didn't want them to follow the one true God. So this story would have encouraged them, wouldn't it, that God was really at work in this move of bringing them back to, 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 to their homeland and helping them in today's story in this work of caring for each other by building the city wall and protecting each other. And it means something similar for us today, doesn't it? You see, God's people uh, have a a tough time today in many ways. I don't know if you hear sometimes grown-ups talking or things on the TV or internet. Um, Many of the rulers in our world don't necessarily make it easy for God's people to follow him. God's people today still have the same struggle with sin in our hearts, uh, a sort of divided heart towards the Lord and not finding it easy to, to follow him. And then there are those who oppose God's people, uh, and um, uh, and make it difficult, discourage people from following God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this story would show us, wouldn't it, that God was really behind Nehemiah and, uh, and his people, and he really is the same God today um, who looks after his people and enables their plans to succeed. So I think this story would really encourage us, if we don't already, to follow God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, And the wonderful truth of the gospel is that he's made that possible, hasn't he? He's made it possible for us to do that through Jesus, his son, who died, taking the punishment for our sins and rose again so that we can share in his eternal life. But if we've done that already, I think this story would really encourage us to care for God's people. You see, today we don't care for God's people by building city walls, but God still wants his people to care for each other practically in all sorts of ways. And we can do that, can't we? If we're one of God's people, we can be a friend to people in God's people. We can look after them. We can meet their practical needs and help them. We can pray for them. We can encourage them to follow the Lord Jesus. And there are all sorts of things that might put us off from doing that. You know, there are lots of good, fun things that we might want to be doing with our time. and Maybe looking after God's people isn't top of our list. Some people make it difficult uh, for us to care for them. Uh, sometimes people discourage us uh, from uh, following Jesus and for caring for his people. But I think this story would really show us that, encourage us that God is able to, in, uh, to help his people serve him. And in particular, in this area of care for his people, he's really able to make it possible. And so it's a wonderful encouragement and, uh, and challenge, perhaps, for us to do that, isn't it? Um, and uh, to, to, to be doing that this week uh, and, and for the rest of our lives. I think you've been sent an activity sheet to unpack this wonderful story a little bit more. Um, But just as I finish, let me say a quick prayer in light of what we've heard today. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful story about how you were really at work among those people who came back to Israel uh, at that time. And in particular, you helped them. You were really at work in helping them build this wall for their protection and security. You helped them care for each other in this way. So, Lord Jesus, please help us to follow you, uh, who are the same God today, whose plans succeed and who enables your people to do uh, what you would have them do. And so please would you help us to grow as people who care for your people. Uh, And Lord, help us to know that you will give us the strength and everything that we need to do that. So help us, we pray, to do what you would have us do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.